So, Digby, I mean, putting aside for a moment the um, the much anticipated um, James Comey uh, testimony this week, um, earlier in the week, before we heard from what I think you could only say was in some ways stonewalling by the uh, director of national intelligence and uh, the NSA chief, where they basically said, like, I would rather not talk about whether or not uh, President Trump tried to um, influence our investigation or the FBI investigation via us. Yeah, I got to say, I don't think you need to be a, um, a, a rocket scientist to figure out that if he hadn't done that, they would have felt very comfortable saying, absolutely not. <laughs> so, um, but uh, leaving that aside for a moment, the beginning of the week started off with a piece in The Intercept um, under four bylines, including um, the their recent hire, uh, Washington Chief Ryan Grimm, that a top-secret NSA report detailed Russian attempts at hacking. I mean, hacking is probably the wrong word, but, well, maybe it's the right word hacking the um, voter files uh, of uh, in, in uh, uh, attempting to hack in about 120 counties across the country. They did this by basically using fairly rudimentary phishing techniques where they got the uh, logins for people who worked at a software company that provided um, software for voter files that uh, people use in different counties around the country. They managed to get the credentials of one or two workers there. They then broke into their accounts, got all sorts of information, so that two months later, sometime between uh, the last week of October and the first week of November before the election in 2016, they sent out uh, about 122, like I said, emails to county election officials with the hopes that they would be uh, uh, they they would log into their information and then these hackers would then more or less uh, put on some type of malware and have access to uh, their computers the NSA was not uh, did not say they found any evidence that this in any way impacted uh, voter registration files uh, or vote tallies for that matter but yet we have at least evidence more evidence that the Russians were actively involved in attempting to impact the vote directly. And subsequent to this, uh, the FBI arrested a 25-year-old woman who worked uh, for a contractor for basically sending this uh, document to the Intercept. I mean, what's your take on all this? Well, I mean, I, th I think it's fascinating. We had some, some idea already that there had been some tampering or attempted tampering with the voter files, I think, before the election. We, we had heard this, and, and my understanding, too, was that this was the issue that had the Obama administration most concerned about all the hacking stuff, which was one reason why they didn't, uh, you know, more strongly go after or, or make any public statements about the rest of it, the stuff with the DNC and the bots and the fake news and all the rest of the election interference stuff, because their main concern was this idea that maybe they were going to hack into the voter files or potentially, I guess, theoretically find some way to at literally tamper with the vote. So that was where their, their focus was prior to the election. So this wasn't a, a total surprise, but I, I think that this idea that the NSA has, you know, it appears to have real evidence that this happened and also that it happened that this was a Russian military operation, the GRU, right, um, which is their intelligence arm, which I hadn't heard before, that this was, you know, that there was anything that was literally directed by the Russian military. But the reason they think this is because they've done it all over the world. Uh, this is actually not an unusual uh, thing that they did. And, in fact, there is some belief that it was successful in Ukraine and in some other places that they've actually succeeded in literally changing the vote by by doing this sort of hacking. So that I found very interesting. You know, the the fact that I mean this this young woman who 
you know, she was obviously an amateur and didn't have the kind of sophisticated um, knowledge of the uh, risk she was undertaking that she probably should have um, right. put herself in a terrible position. And there's a lot of stuff going back and forth about whether the Intercept handled it right and what they did and whether or not she should have been better protected. If the way it looks to me, and I could be wrong, was that she did things that were outside the Intercept's control that would have got, you know, they would have found the NSA. This is the NSA we're talking about. You know, it's not like some, right. you know, some movie, uh, you know, m movie production company. I mean, this is this is they have the ability to do this. It's what they do. So she probably would have been found out anyway. Um, but it's a it's a very interesting uh, aspect of this, and one which has you know, I, you know, the guy Clint Watts. He's an ex-FBI agent. He testified before Congress. He's the guy who said, you know, start ca just count up the number of, you know, dead Russians right. uh, in testimony. He wrote a yes. thing to the Daily Beast last week, which I, th I found one of the most fa fascinating sort of analysis of what's going on that I've read recently, which is that in the end, as, as the, you know, as you, as the election was, was coming, the, the Russians apparently decided that Hillary was going to win, and what their whole point was to try and sow, um, you know, some kind of, of, you know, idea that she had rigged the election, right? And, and so that a lot of this was aimed at, get, at, at that kind of disinformation, to get people to believe that there had been some kind of tampering and that she was responsible for it. And this goes back to, you know, this, this stuff about, you know, Seth Rich and the DNC guy leaking, you know, and all that stuff. Um, this is very interesting to me because at the same time that the Russians, if that's true, and their idea was simply to sow some kind of, of you know, lack of, of faith in the American electoral system, which apparently is something they've done elsewhere as, as well, um, and and to to you know put some kind of a damper on on Hillary Clinton's win, and Donald Trump was doing exactly that same thing during that period. The Russians were doing this. If they were doing this, Donald Trump, whether knowingly or unknowingly, was absolutely reinforcing that particular program. <laughs> he was out there. You remember saying, you know, it's all rigged. She's rigging it. It's rigged. The election's rigged. It, you know, I mean, he even came. He'd said it in one of the debates, and then later came out and said, well, the only way I will say if the election, I will say that the election wasn't rigged if I win. You know, right. and of course, and Watts' theory here is that you know this this entire thing has now blown back on Trump. Right? I mean, <laughs> he's now suffering because he won the thing. Uh, unexpectedly, and now all of that that entire campaign of uh, you know b b making people lose faith in the election uh, results is now blowing back on him. And I thought that was really interesting because that is one case where Trump, and if the Russians were doing this, Trump and the Russians were absolutely on the same page every step of the way, which is weird. I mean, it's weird. I, I mean, it it is weird, and I I don't. I... I, you know, uh, but at the same time, I mean, you know, if, if I, I could see the Russians having this agenda and just simply saying this is what we do when he's doing that, it makes some sure. sense. Chicken or the egg, right? I mean, who right. knows Doesn't whether or not it was coordinated. Have, right, exactly. All right. Well, we've got to take a quick break. We'll be right back uh, more on uh, this another crazy week in the Trump era. We'll be right back. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. We're talking to the great Digby. <laughs> 